Uh, we'll, we'll chase that every week if it need be. This is our 28th player, I think, for the year. It's ground three. It's just simply that you, it may well be horses to the courses until we come across the right combination. A few of them have been forced. We've had players out injured and we've had players that, that haven't on the day performed to that expectation. Then we've looked at players who don't really match up against the opponent. So I guess we're in a, in a fortunate position in many respects that we can actually chop and change the side to accommodate the opposition. There will, there will come a time when the team is good enough to handle every opposition and therefore we don't have to go into our VFL side to accommodate that. Right now, no, we need to keep doing that until we find the right combination. No, no, this is always, this is expected. I don't know, I don't, there's a few players I, I knew by name and coached against them once or twice. No, no, this is, this is uh, I believe it's giving everyone a chance to display their wares. Um, I, I haven't come in here totally blind, but I also haven't come in here with a fixed mind that some players can and some players can't play. And I think that's, you've got to do that. You've got to give them every player an opportunity to, to say, I can do this and play this role for you. So we'll give them that chance if they play well at the VFL or they hold up playing AFL. Well, as, it's funny you say that because I spoke to Heath, I spoke to the group this morning and I spoke about Heath, that he just keeps reinventing himself. But make no mistake about it, you can reinvent yourself every day of the week if you want, but if you haven't got a, a grim determination to be better and to have a massive amount of pride in your performance, which Heath has, then, then uh, reinventing yourself uh, has, has, bears no fruit. So he, he's the sort of player that has just got, um, uh, contrary to popular belief, Bruce, which your newspaper may well have um, said, I didn't get rid of Heath. Heath wanted to go because he wanted to play in the midfield and I didn't think he was going to be placing the midfield we had. So therefore I gave him an opportunity like I've given many young blokes opportunities to change club because I changed club and you have changed the fortunes or sometimes you don't. Or, and we've always stayed in contact, always, because he's had a very good friendship with a, several Collingwood players who I had a very, very strong bond with. So we always stayed in contact and always had respect for one another. And I think that's, that's singularly one of the most important things in life is have respect for people that you actually work with. Oh, I think the game's changed. The game's changed and he's adjusted to the game. The game certainly has changed. This, this was 2004, I think, so we're looking at nearly 10 years ago. No, no, I, that, that didn't happen. I come into the football club and we made that decision. Again, just getting the truth of the matter out is very important, that, you know, that I have not... Um, um, su suspended or uh, disciplined players is quite absurd. The fact is that I have, you know, when I, before I even played my first, coached my first game, I suspended a player for a week. So it's hardly good journalism at the moment that suggests that I haven't had that. Yeah, any, any decision where you leave a player out is tough. Dropping players this week's tough. But that comes, comes with the responsibility of the job. Uh, I play everyone at least once. In what order? It's not an issue to me, not at all. I don't care what order. You know, every club has to play each one once. And because of the numbers now compared to what it used to be, you play uh, the old VFL days, you knew you played them twice. Then as the two sides entered into, you had, had ten sides that you, only, you, you played, whatever it was, and then now it's five sides. So, no, that's... Uh, what order they're in doesn't make any difference. It's just simply that every, every team you have to respect, and every team has its own differences, and every team you have to adjust to. I know you don't like putting more importance on one game than any other, but there's a lot, it's a long way back from zero and three. Does that worry you at all? Well, we're zero and two. What, either I've got that, have I got that? Well, you're, you're, making a very, you're making a massive assumption. I don't get caught up in assumptions. Well, I'm asking you, how important is this game? It's no different than last week, nor the Richmond game, nor the next week. If you don't treat the next game as the most important one of your life, you're, you're kidding yourself. But zero and three, you're saying it's not that it's no more important than the other game. But zero and three, not many sides make finals for me. What part didn't you get understand? Well, I'm asking you, is there any concern this week? It's no more, no less coming into week three, week four, week two, or week one. Just listen to what I say. Every game's important. You play each club minimum once. The sign, final siren, if they stopped it at half time, uh, would the ladder be the way it is? No. You know what? 
The siren goes at the end of the game and it tells you whether you won or lost. It's the only good thing about the siren at the end. It tells you whether you've won or whether you've lost. Week 22 tells you this. You're in or you're out. Not week three. Week 22. A lot of ground. Dylan is a uh, young man playing his first game. Uh, on top of on top of his endeavour, yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he's worked very diligently to get in. There's no handouts here. We don't hand out games. So he's earned, he's earned the right. Um, high workload. In statistical data alone, his work ethic from last year is increased dramatically. So you're talking about his work ethic or you're talking about something else that I... You know, he's, uh, he was one of our better players last week. He was... Um, I can't remember the first week, actually. But I, I do know that his, his actual work ethic, if, and we can measure that now, we measure all last year, and he is... Um, you know, this will be a bit of a little punt on the guess, but I'd say it is something like, I think, nearly 8% higher than last year. I haven't... I don't listen to any radio, TV shows when they're... The relevance is, to me is watching what we see and how they go about it. So um, I didn't see that article. Is that a, that's his his assessment, is it? Yeah. Oh well, look, I, I can't interfere with and don't wish to challenge what people say in the media. That's their job. I know how we we value um, uh, things a little bit differently, and we we uh, judge. We have a lot of judge, if you like, a lot of judgments within the game that that dictate whether the player is playing well or not playing well, whether he's working hard, whether he's not working hard. Uh, what his man's doing and what he, what value is to the team. Geelong, Geelong are a very, <clears throat> I think you you have you come through eras, and it'd be fair to say let's go back to VFL days. Um, Hawthorne held up for a long, long time. They didn't win every premiership. They held up a long, long time. Their key players and their key disciplines were the same. So they become um, become a side to be feared because they were you respected them and they played with a certain intensity and and the players they brought in virtually come in and did the same role whether Hall was playing or Deere retired or whatever the case may be. Then we went through Brisbane, I suppose, early this year, uh, early this uh, 2000s, and they held up for a long time. And what, what, why did they hold up? Because they had very good leadership, had a good principle about their game structure, and players just fitted straight in. And now we look at um, Geelong have probably been the next side that have won multiple Premierships, no different. Just a very well organised, structured team, well coached, well led, and kids come in and they are expected to play a certain role. And we may well be seeing that with Sydney, because Sydney have won uh, you know, two or three premierships in that same time. People talk about the culture, what the senior players develop. And that's what we try to do here. That's what I try to do at Collingwood, was, and, and West Coast. Establish a game style, establish a, a culture, and people come in, they look at it, and they look at uh, how uh, Lecuria trained. We want them all to train like that. And in this case, it'd be, what did Ling do? Now, what does Sel would do? And, and Geelong are always going to be a side to be reckoned with because they have got a wonderfully structured football club. It's got nothing to me to do with James Hood, the AFL, and they're sitting there handling that. I don't speculate. I don't believe in rumours, innuendos. There's too much of it. Everyone's got an opinion. You, you guys, that's what your job is to have opinions, perhaps.